Water filters designed for backpackers uh, are typically either made out of a synthetic or ceramic cartridge. They're housed inside sturdy plastic or metal casings. This is an example of a synthetic cartridge. And next to it here, we have the ceramic cartridge. So this is kind of like a piece of pottery. Um, they're full of tiny microporous holes. And some filters also use a, a carbon core to them, which helps remove sediment and taste. Most water filters come with two separate hoses. One is going to be considered your clean hose and one is going to be designated as the dirty hose, meaning that this hose goes in dirty water and pulls dirty water into the filter. And this hose takes clean water from the filter and puts it into wherever you're storing your water, whether it's a gallon jug or a water bottle. You can actually see a little difference in the coloration here between these two hoses uh, on the one that has been used for dirty water and the one that's been used for clean. So you're going to take that dirty hose and you're going to attach it to the intake part of the filter, which happens to be on the top of this model. And a lot of these dirty hoses also come with some form of a pre-filter, which you can see here. There's a little bit of foam in there, as well as this foam flotation device, which basically, when you put this into a creek or stream, allows this to hover just kind of around the top of the water. So this piece is not dangling in the bottom where all the silt and grit may be. These are also great for keeping leaves and mosquito larvae and other chunky stuff that you might find in your water that you don't want to drink out of the filter. So that end of your dirty hose is going to go into your dirty water source, creek or stream of some sort. And you're going to take the other hose, that clean hose, and you can attach it to your output point. Uh, happens to be on the bottom of this model. Or with some of these models, they are designed to screw directly onto a Nalgene or a hydration bladder. If you're using the hose, you're gonna attach this to that little nozzle in there. And then this end of the hose is going to go into your water bottle or your hydration bladder or wherever you want that clean water to go so you can drink it. So one of the biggest reasons that filters can fail would be cross-contamination. And that is where the clean hose and the dirty hose get mixed up and you're not sure which one is which and you're not sure which one went in the creek and which one didn't. So uh, a lot of companies will provide you with uh, little storage bags that are labeled either dirty or clean or in this case the outlet hose. Um, so you can keep this hose clean and the other dirty hose elsewhere. Uh, I find that using a Ziploc, Ziploc bag works perfectly well for this and you can go ahead and use a Sharpie and write which one is which. Um, I also am, would recommend keeping that clean hose in the Ziploc bag and then maybe just leaving the dirty hose out on its own. There are different sorts of pumping mechanics for water filters. Um, two of the more common are gonna be the plunger style, which is what this model has. You can see the top of this long plunger has a, a broad handle that fits in the palm nicely and allows you to plunge uh, and this will force water through the filter. Another common style is going to be the lever. So in, in this case we have uh, this side handle that is pulled back and forced down like a lever. So to filter water we're going to have, we have this bottle which we're considering our dirty water. So this is the creek or the stream uh, with our dirty hose running into the filter and we're going to do this lever motion to pump and we're forcing water through all those tiny pores in the filter cartridges that we looked at earlier. And it's going into this <coughs> blue bottle, which is going to be the drinking water. Regardless of the material that your water filter is made out of, and in this instance, we are looking at a synthetic cartridge, uh, the premise on how they work is that they're full of tons and tons of teeny microporous holes that most of your contaminants cannot fit through. However, water molecules are smaller than those pores and slide through them easily, thus creating your clean drinking water.